In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, Give all for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. 
There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from the following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him, In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hoped in Christ, in him you also who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, 
which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear, a sec- wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I have this memory that goes way back, and I think it's, well, I know it's partly grace. I can remember just as a tiny boy, our house, and there was a particular time, mom was trying to teach me the Holy Mary, the Hail Mary, and she would make me say it, and then she'd make me say it again, because that's how you memorize something, right? Right? How did you learn the faith? Most certainly, you had somebody that walked with you. And walked with you, for many people, it's mom and dad. In fact, that's the reason when we baptize, I baptize an infant, because the idea is you're going to be surrounded by this household of a Christian community where it just fits. That's life. But others come into the faith. We, we now call it the OCIA. It was the RCIA. Same idea. Somebody walked with you along the way. And this is where I find something that's... I don't want to say uniquely Catholic, but our Catholic faith shows through. God could have deemed that the way Christianity was going to spread is we would have had this wonderful experience where we just were infused with everything that we needed. 
Ah, great! (laughs) But Jesus took, and I dare say he took an incredible risk because he left the church with us. That's from this moment on, the spreading on the gospel is, look around, us. He begins to send out these, the 12, two by two. And it's very interesting because I hadn't considered it and somebody pointed out, again, somebody's pointing out to me, notice that he began to send them out. That means that they don't all go out at once. It implies that he's working with him, coaching them, saying, now you go out. All these things that you've seen me do all the way up to chapter 6, You do. You do in my name. And oh, by the way, don't take any food with you. Don't take any sack. No many belts. You can take sandals. (laughs) I think of the life of a priest. Well, at least a parish priest. We've been blessed with all this things left to us by our parents, our grandparents. And what is Father David doing? Some people have told me this. Father David is always asking for money. Why do I do that? It's implicit right here. Jesus said, the only thing you need is me. And you're going to rely on me. And therefore... Because you're relying on me, you're going to need to trust and you're going to need to ask as you go along the way. Amazingly, of all the things that you think, what's the message? Always funny in the gospel, according to Mark, because he doesn't really go into the message or give us these long speeches as he does, especially in the gospel, according to John. But if we were to pick the number one thing, the message is repentance. It goes right back to the first pages of the gospel according to Mark. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. In other words, we are supposed to examine ourselves and change our ways. And then the driving out of the demons, then the curing, which again, anointing with oil, what does that remind us of? The sacrament of anointing, very important. Where am I going with this? How many priests live at St. Patrick right now? I got an answer, one. (laughs) How many, how did Jesus send them out? Two by two. Do you see a problem? I need help. I need help. This is not the work of the priest alone. It, I, it, many things are, should be the work of the priest alone, but we don't even have the number of vocations to put a second priest in all the rectories. And my guess is you remember a day when that was true. So therefore, we need to beg and pray for vocations, just like we're begging for all the other good things that we need. And then to realize this is part of us too. I pouring through the scriptures, reading, praying, with the intent that I am going to give the faith to someone else, because that is our Christian faith, that is our belief. We are meant to pass on the gospel. As I kind of alluded to, there's only so much the pastor, the priest can do, and we're to take up the rest. We are to bring this good news, because Jesus chose to send us out. Therefore, yes, let's pray for vocations and then pray, Jesus, what's my part? Do I need to learn more? 
Is it today just being a, a better Christian? Is it, it, I read something wonderful by Pope Francis talking about our role in the community. Is it me? Maybe it's just my generosity and my loving others. For the Lord sends us out to give the gospel to someone else so the church can grow and grow and grow. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. In being sent out, we need the Lord's help in everything. Therefore, we raise up these needs. For the needs of the Universal Church, St. Patrick Parish, and in particular, for Estero... Pugno on birthday remembrance. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church and all her leaders, may the Spirit move mightily to bring healing and peace through God's servants. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders throughout the world, may the Lord grant them wisdom and insight. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick or beset by burdens, may God provide resources and people to aid them. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may we be given all we need to answer God's call with courage and zeal. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of rising again, may they rejoice in the riches of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. For the homebound, that they may see the love of the Lord in those who visit and take care of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Hear our prayer. We offer everything to you through Christ our Lord. Shepherd of souls, refresh and bless your chosen.
pray. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of our whole family order our days in your peace, in command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, to be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house forever, singing your praise. And we believe that we 
Let us pray.
Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.